Jason, this is going to make some firewood. It is. It is. Nice oak. Yeah. Not so good for you, pretty good for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, got that tree out of the way. And this is the first yard that we will be checking before winter. So our apigard treatments are all over. All the nukes have been oxalic acid vaporization twice. We're going to take these rims off. We don't need them anymore. We've just been spot feeding up until now. Unless something's really heavy, I expect most of these colonies to get some sort of feed, whether it's a one gallon or two gallon bucket. We're just in a day or two, we'll be on the 1st of September. The goldenrod pollen is going to start coming in in earnest. We just had a bunch of rain, which probably was a good thing. So, uh, help the goldenrod do a good job. In our area, the goldenrod does not put off much nectar. Not sure if it's the variety or the location, but we just don't. But we do get enough pollen to help the bees build up for winter. So we'll be going through every single colony closely. In other words, we'll be looking at the brood pattern, making sure that the queen is doing at least a reasonable job. And it's not about the queen being perfect, actually. The, the deciding factor is, is she doing good enough for this colony to make it through winter? And if the answer is no, they may get requeened. We have a few queens to use, or they may just get combined. Every colony is going to get a uh, dose of... Um, probiotics, nukes too, and uh, from this point forward it's just about getting them ready for winter. We're done making honey, we're done treating. We are gonna, Actually we are going to do some spot checks, a few alcohol washes just to get a general idea of where we stand with the mites. I want to make sure that the numbers are relatively low. I'd like to see a one or less, uh, for sure no more than two or three. If, the, if there's more than two or three mites in a wash in any of these colonies, we'll be back here with the oxalic acid vaporization treatment. At this point, I will not give any more apigard because that tends to shut the queen down. And at this date, I don't want to shut the queen down. I want her to get going. What I expect to see in many of these colonies is a nice, clean, fresh, kind of new brood pattern. A lot of times after apigard, it almost appears like you just made it a queen and she's just starting to lay. And uh, even good, established, mature queens will, for the most part, stop with a good apigard treatment. And then they'll come back looking like it's just a brand new queen starting over. So anxious to get in here. we got a lot of yards to do. Um, hopefully in the next 7 to 10 days we'll have gotten through the whole outfit one time. And then after that it'll be much quicker because we will have inspected all the brood nests, uh, made a determination on all the queens, and after that it'll just be a matter of putting on the weight properly, getting them ready for winter. Now, the feed we're using today is actually very thin. It's 1.5 parts water to one part sugar. The reason for that is that right now I don't want to put on a lot of weight fast, but I do want to begin the process. Uh, that very thin syrup will be highly stimulating. It elicits hygienic behavior. Um, it creates that chemistry that I talk about from time to time. Say, same type of chemistry and enzymes that occur when the bees are bringing in fresh nectar. And I think the combination of that along with uh, the goldenrod pollen coming in should really put these bees in pretty good shape for winter. I don't expect large clusters. Uh, the bee type of bees we're running lends themselves to having a relatively small cluster for winter. The big massive colonies that we had just a month or, in a, month, or a month and a half ago are now gone. Those older bees that made all the honey back in June and July are now gone and uh, the bees that are replacing the brood nest now are just from you know less frames of brood. Some of these colonies only have two to four frames of brood in them and for this time of year I think that's normal. Anyway, anxious to get in them, and uh, we'll see what we got. Okay, Selena's into the very first colonies, and we can make a comment here. Of course, we're taking off the cards that we used for Apigard. That colony looks in reasonable shape. This one's very small. 
uh, probably was a nuke or something late that replaced this empty spot. We do that if we get an empty spot, we'll just stick a nuke in there. Now, I'm pretty confident that we're going to have some duds. In other words, some colonies that are either queenless or very poor queen. Yeah, looks like we just did that one. You got brood in there? Mm -hmm. I, looks yes. like the next frame has brood. So what I want to do at this point is any colony that has foundation in it, we'll take it out and we'll put in frames from dud colonies, you know, colonies that aren't making the grade. So we'll have no foundation going into winter. There aren't probably but just a handful of these type of colonies around and I'm sure that we have enough duds here and there to fix that kind of stuff. I'm not trying to draw foundation anymore. I don't think they'll do a good job of it at this late date. So it's just about, uh, I just explained in the earlier part of this video that we're just giving them the thin syrup to uh, um, stimulate, put a little weight on stimulation. We're not trying to put on 30 pounds of weight in one week. I don't want to close that brood nest down just yet. That'll come later in October. So unless they're pretty heavy, uh, we'll give them something. Uh, even just a one gallon bucket just to kind of keep them fired up and stimulated a bit. And you want a one gallon? So I, I would say small. a one, yeah, because mm -hmm. of the lack of bee bodies there. I don't think I'd give them a two gallon bucket. They'll probably just backfill their brood nest and not do what we want. Now a colony like this, if it's light, it'll get a two gallon bucket. Let's just kind of heft it and see what you got. Mm, it's pretty light. Pretty light. Okay, two gallon buckets. Honestly, I expect to be using two gallon buckets a lot, probably way more than one gallon buckets. Especially in these yards down south of the shop that didn't make a lot of honey back in July, they probably will be needing a two gallon bucket. But, uh, you know, it's your call. You, you make the call. Nobody's going to starve. We'll be back in two weeks, and then two weeks after that, and then two weeks after that. So, and each time we come, we'll do that little half trick and just make a judgment every time. So, uh, everybody gets, gets a probiotic, a good, a good dose, no mini dose like we were doing. And uh, we'll give them a dose today, this round, and then the next time we come, we might skip it, and then the time after that, give them another dose. All right, how, how do these two look, sir, just for the fun of it? That one looks okay. Okay, looks about normal. What I'm curious about is the brood pattern. I want to see what the brood... Dig me out a frame of brood there, either one of you guys. Well, they got food, don't they? A little bit. You know, normally by now, if we weren't feeding these things, you know, this is like, well, this is a month since we took the honey supers off. These things would be starving to death. Mm -hmm. But they just had a lot of honey in the brood nest, so I think we're pretty good. So after the apigard, what I would expect to see is a lot of fresh eggs and larvae, and that's what I'm seeing in this frame. What's the other side? Same, same thing, yeah. So it looks like brand new stuff, doesn't it? Yeah. How about you? What do you think? About the same. About the same. A lot of brand new stuff. Mm -hmm. Let's take out another just for the fun of it. I'm not going to do this throughout this whole yard. I'm just. This is just for the video. It's all brand new stuff too. Yep. Eggs and larvae. Eggs and larvae. Yeah, that apigard really shuts them down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Looks all right to me. And then those little guys have got brood, so they'll be okay. I know that seems pretty small. That's, what, three to four frames of bees? Yeah, uh, make four. Four, yeah. They'll make it through winter, especially with that brand new queen in there, just fresh, just having made it and all. And, uh, okay. <laughs> We're just getting started. we got a long ways to go. Oh yeah, that'll come out, yeah. We kind of got to keep that stuff, if there's any honey in it at all, we'll have to keep it covered so we don't start robbing. Um, let's see, we could take a box that has feeders in it right now. Those feeders are for the double deeps we're going to get to later today. Uh, we could use one of those and just put these kind of frames in there and cover them so we don't start robbing. 
And also, now, another, just a thought, this frame right here is not all drawn out, but oh, it's not something we want to get rid of either. So what I would do, because there's not brood in here, I would put that against the wall. Okay. And then these, because these dud combs that we're going to run across will be fully drawn, probably got some pollen in them. They can go right against the brood nest here. And this frame looks okay. It can probably stay. So I would just put the lid upside down, and then we'll know we got to come back to that and deal with it. Um, if we don't find at least one dud in this thing, I'll be very surprised. Okay, a couple things of interest now that we're through this yard. Um, one is that we did some mite rolls, alcohol washes, and although we saw um, some zeros, we also saw a four. And my view is four is too much right now. Now I can kind of guess why. Because of the heat and the way we were working around the temperatures, this yard only got one full dose and then later got one one half a dose and we've never gotten around to the what would be the second half a dose which would give it a what would be considered a full range of treatment in other words two full doses or four half doses so it's a half a dose behind so we are going to come in here with one good hefty oxalic acid uh, treatment i think that'll take it down to uh reasonable numbers and then they'll be good until we go broodless in late November early December and then we'll treat them with oxalic twice actually a four would actually probably make it I mean without going into virus mode and all that garbage but uh, yeah. we'll go ahead and give them another oxalic and try to bring it down and again they don't all have four mites it's just if we find one like that uh, that tells me I want to treat the whole yard and then this uh, colony is a good example many of these colonies put a lot of propolis around that card that had th had thymol on it. They didn't like the thymol. Um, I'm actually kind of pleased to see all this propolis all over the place. I'm just going to leave it. We're not scraping it off. Um, the more I learn about propolis, the more I'm glad to see it around. I chew on it a lot myself. I like to see the bees have it. I'm actually really, uh, I don't know if you know this, uh, Seth, but... Uh, Marlo Spivak from the University of Minnesota is going to be at Cayman's, uh, oh, cool. the uh, North American Honey, Honey Bee Expo. Yeah. yeah, I got to learn the name all over. I keep wanting to call it Hive Life, but I it's just not. Call it the Expo. The Expo, that's a good. We'll shorten it up to Expo. Marlo Spivak's going to be there, and she's an excellent uh, speaker yeah. on propolis. In fact, that's been the latter part of her career up there has been all about propolis, and she's showing some really, really good research good. showing that it's very, very good for our colonies to have propolis throughout, and uh, so I'm glad to see it. Yeah, well, now we just, we, okay, and we had uh, one, two duds. No, we had one dud and then one that had a poor queen and we went ahead and killed her. And because there's still bees or field force you know, active at that location, we'll take a couple of these queen mating nukes, which are all good. The nukes are all good. They just need a gallon bucket of feed. We'll take two nukes and figure fix those two uh, spots and then this yard will be complete. We also found a couple colonies that had queens from 2022. We will be keeping track of that. Um, most of our yards are completely requeened. This one is not. It's about 75% requeened. So any of these colonies that aren't looking full, full enough of bees in October, we will probably slip one of those queen mating nukes, give them a brand new queen, and fix that issue. So most yards will not need any of that uh, because, you know, queen-wise, most of our yards are actually completely requeened. All in all, pretty good shape. I'm happy with the yard. Um, just a little more feeding, a little second checking on bee numbers with some of these older queens in October. Besides that, it's just a matter of feeding. Um, they all had some food, which was so surprising to me. I keep talking about that. Usually the singles by now are really needing feed badly, but these weren't bad. They could have went another week or two without feed with no issues, but it's really time to start the process. You know. And also, and one more thing, uh, this is one of our southern yards. Usually, uh, we start in the north later in the week, year and work our way down through the outfit. 
it wouldn't have been for that tree over the yard, we wouldn't be here today. We would be starting up north and working our way south because the goldenrod pollen is starting earlier north of here than it is south. So in this spot where there was a dud, I'm choosing to put the whole nuke box here. We're fixing this with a five frame nuke, but rather than transfer it into this deep box where the dud came from, I'm just going to leave the nuke intact. It's a, quite overcast here. The bees are just a little bit testy, so I don't want them taking this queen out. And if we just leave it in the nuke box, I think that gives us a much better odds of that being successful. And then the next time we come, we'll take a deep box and transfer that nuke in. Um, let's see, well, there's one over there we did. Replace the queen, we killed the queen and use the frames and some of these others that still had foundation and we just put a nuke box in that place. They'll absorb the, the field force that comes in. But because they're still in a nuke box, they won't be overwhelmed. I think that's the best way to do it on this day. You ready? You ready. Okay. This is a yard of mostly double deep, so we're gonna do things a little differently here. <clears throat> um, I want every double deep to have one of those gallon and a half black inside feeders. Some have one, but many don't. So everywhere you put one of those in, you're going to generate two frames, which will go right back in the box that the feeder came out of on the truck. Right. And what we will do is the singles that are scattered around will make those double deeps. We'll add the frames we're taking out of the others and make a box with a feeder yep. and put them on these singles. And uh, I prefer feeding with buckets, but we don't have enough buckets. And because I know we're going to have less beehives next year, I'm not inclined to buy more buckets right yeah. now. I just like to go with what we got. So all the double deeps, not only this yard, but everywhere we go over the next week, we'll do the same thing. And at the end, we probably will have some extra comb, more than what we want to put on singles. Okay. Uh, and then that'll, that can go to the cooler for the winter. Yeah. And, and I only want to make double deeps in yards that are already mostly double deep. So I don't want to create double deeps in yards that are basically mostly. a yard yeah. of singles. I get it. Kind of trying to go one way or the other. So, you know, the whole yard gets managed the same way. And uh, let's see, a little different here. We're going to have to dig into the bottom box to check the brood out, which is, you know, it's just the way it is with these double deeps. Yeah. And if they're super heavy, we don't have to feed them. Are we feeding? The, are we putting the feeder in the top or the bottom? In the top. Okay. Now, if it's a small colony, like if some of these singles are are recent nukes, right? You know, we could put it in the bottom to make sure they use it properly. Yeah. Because if it's a small colony and we put it in the top box, they they're not going to the, utilize it. Yeah, they won't go up there. Yeah, they'll just sit there and go bad. So yeah, thanks for asking that. That's a good point. And of course, just like the other yard, all the rims come off and. Uh, probiotics and the usual routine there. Okay. So it's really overcast. Seth and I were just talking. Uh, you know, I hope the bees don't get too ill with us. Right. This is not a very good day for working bees. No. But because m these colonies are mostly our genetics, they won't be as bad as some of the other yards that have still got some of the old genetics in them. Yeah. This yard turned out good. Colonies were all pretty heavy. We only had to feed two or three. Um, we had one that was queenless, so we fixed it with one of these double screen board type nukes that we have around. Um, we did a few mite washes. They were all zeros, so I'd say the mites in this yard are under control. Don't have to worry about that. And uh, most of these colonies would make it to next spring with the food they got. But later on in uh, late September, early October, we'll give them a feeder or two to top them off get them extra heavy before winter sets in. I like having the colony super heavy going into winter so I don't have to worry so much in the spring. And these double deeps are so good for that too. And you know, we'll have 100 pounds of food in these things for sure, maybe more before we go into winter. It's one of the beauties of double deeps. You can cram a lot of food in one of these things. Anyway, for those of you that watched the video with my neighbor Jack, this is that yard. This is the yard on Jack's property. It's a small yard, but it's a really good spot, and I, it's a little inconvenient to use, but we like it because it just does so well.